Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team and I'm here to present you the first tutorial of Unity 5 from beginner to pro. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and if you want more Unity 5 tutorials, remember to subscribe to our channel. As you guys probably know, Unity 5 was released last week. With this new version of the engine, there is no point in continuing our Unity 4 introduction course. Instead, we will begin a new series on our channel fully dedicated to Unity 5. Since Unity is now free, we probably will have some new users and there has been also some changes from version 4 to 5, so let's do a quick recap of the interface of Unity. For this video, we are going to use the example project that can be downloaded with Unity 5. Unity interface can be divided into 5 components. The toolbar on the upper part of the screen, the scene and the game view, the inspector tab, the hierarchy tab and the project tab. The toolbar consists of 5 controls. Each control relates to a different part of the editor. The transform tool allows you to move in the scene, move objects, rotate objects, scale them or select them. Next, you can set the gizmo for the game objects. For example, you can have the gizmo in the center of the game object or in the pivot. You can also change, the, change it to locally or globally. Moving on, you have three buttons. Play, Pause and Step. With play, you can test your game in the editor, and pause will pause it. So we press play, and now the game should play on the editor. If you press pause, the game will pause. The step button allows you to... The step button allows you to step the progress of your game a frame at a time. Next, you have the layers. This allows you to control the objects that are displayed in the scene view by selecting different layers. And finally, you can choose the layout you want to the project or create a new one. The hierarchy tab that you can see right here contains all game objects in the current scene. As you can see, some of the game objects have parenting, have parenting relations between them. So, for example, the car is the parent of the colliders and the colliders is the parent of collider body, collider bottom and collider front. You can also see prefabs in the hierarchy tab. For example, the car tilt controls. The prefabs are shown in blue color while the normal game objects are in black. Every time you add or remove an object to the scene, this will show up in the hierarchy tab. The scene view that you can see right here is where you select and position the environments, players, camera and enemies, and all other game objects. By clicking and dragging the mouse, you can drag the camera around. If you hold ALT key and drag, you will orbit the camera around the current pivot point. Next, if you hold 
If you hold the right click and drag, you can zoom in the scene. Also, the scene gizmos allow you to change your current view. You can also move in the scene using the, the W, A, S and D keys, just like in a game. On the scene control bar, you can, vi can view various options for the scene, like for example, turning the lights on or off, or change between 2D and 3D. The game view is where your game is rendered. On the control bar, you can set the resolution of the scene, mute audio, or even show some stats during run, run time. Moving on to the inspector, here is where you can see the different components of selected game objects. For example, let's select our car. Okay, so now we have selected our car, you can see that the car game object contains several components. Any property that is displayed on the inspector for example, uh, is kinematic or use gravity can be changed, modified, can be directly modified in the inspector, including variables from your scripts, like for example, maximum steer angle. The inspector is where you will add or remove components from your game objects. The components are what gives lives to game objects and you can use them to define behaviors or effects. Again, a game object can, be, can include several components. As you can see, in the car game object, we have several components. A total of three scripts, a rigid body and a transform component. Finally, on the project tab, you can explore all assets you have imported to your game. If you want to add a specific asset to your scene, search for it in the project tab and drag it over the scene view in the hierarchy tab. For example, you can add a brick and add it to the scene. Or, we can select this brick, delete it and add it by dragging it into the hierarchy tab. That's not what I intended to do because, uh, as you can see, the engine had the brick to the prefab. That's not what we wanted to do. We want to... Let me close this. We want to add the brick to the scene. Okay, so, as you can see, we now have also the brick in the scene. The big difference between adding the game objects is that when you add the game object on the hierarchy, it will add it will add it on the origin so 0 on x y and z while if you add it directly to the scene it will be given the position where you drop it so let's delete it okay guys so this concludes our introduction video to unity 5 on the next videos we will start exploring the engine and its features, and how you can use them to create games. Until then, have a nice day and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.